fellas, have you ever wished you were a little bit taller? Kansuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, guys, girls get heels, makeup, and push-up bras. Why can't men get a boost in confidence, too? For now, for a limited time only, our listeners get an extra 15% off your order with the promo code FRATCHAT at Kanzuri.com. This site is already 30% off, and with our promo code, you can get an extra 15% off. That's 45% off for your entire order. Support our show and check them out at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com and use the promo code FRATCHAT. Merry <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> it is going to be the, the last week of Pride when this comes yeah, out, Mr. Yeah. Mo. So we have a special edition, which is why things are getting so hot and the guns are out for the Frat Chat Podcast. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I'm also extremely hungover for some reason, but I'm you know. horribly hungover, and so is my so, mom. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I saw mascara on. I think from last night. That's not mascara. That's Osmario. Uh, we're gonna do this in uh, three, two, oh, one. What are you doing? Testies in my mouth. Get on the ground, you fucking pledge. Ew. Welcome. To the greatest podcast experience of your life. This is the Frat Chat Podcast. All young men like three things. Dude! Dude! Featuring Carlos Garcia and Chris. Podcasting time! It's the Frat Chat Podcast! I'm Carlos Garcia with Chris Sebo Moore. How's it going, Mr. Moore? I don't know, a little hungover. I'm kind of nauseous from drinking so much, but I'm ready to rock and roll this podcast, bruh. How are you? I am living the dream. We just rocked the house last night at the greatest comedy show of all time. At Broadway Comedy Club, we had a packed house. The comics killed. It was fucking epic. Yeah. It was a great night last night for comedy, Mr. Mo. Uh, I had a lot of fun. My mom enjoyed herself. Yeah, little. rock. Yeah, Mama Mo was in the audience, along with a packed, packed New York City house. And I'm not gonna lie, it was one of those shows that just makes you say, "Damn, we're doing something right." Because that was fucking epic. So thank you guys so much for everybody who supports. Everybody that came out. Everybody that continues to support. And we ain't done yet. So make sure you check that tiny.cc slash greatest comedy show. And start getting those tickets for the rest of the year, buddy. Because those things fill up. We're going to take a little break in July. But we'll be back in August. We're going to kick some ass. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, do the voice. Oh, wow. oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Does this uh, sound like a burp if I if I inhale like this? <laughs> Does it sound like a burp? No, it's, it sounds like you're dying. <laughs> oh, you know what? Sometimes I'm a little buzz when people hear a burp really loud. I don't burp. Like I just I just, just never burp. And no, like once I, in a blue moon, I might I have a silent burp. one. But I'd never, I'd never ever burp, and I wish I could like do like a oh, powerful burp because there's people that I know that can burp like the ABCs. I think that's that's so cool to me. But I, I can't. on the phone, I think it almost sounds like a burp if I go. No, not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, for those of you not watching us on YouTube, uh, Simo did not die on the air, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no need to call 911. Don't stop your car. Keep driving. He's fine. Uh, he's just trying new things. <laughs> my my mom lost her pill box at the bar <laughs> last night. 
And I was like, oh, oh what was in it? And she's like, oh, just my hydrocodone. And I was like, well, oh. what? <laughs> why are you oh. taking that? Well, someone's going to have a great <laughs> night. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah, someone, funny. someone's definitely going to find that. And they're going to Google it. And they're gonna, oh, my gosh. They got so much fun. Freaking and then, she, my mom's so funny. If, like, I, if I have a headache, she's like, She's like, you want a Percocet? Do you want a Percocet? Do you have a Valium? Do you want a Valium? Whatever you need, I have it. I have it all. Okay? You just let me, mommy know. I will, I will she, take care of She you. just opens her coat. <laughs> it's all these pills jiggling. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, Mr. Ma, I think uh, it's about that time. We can we can even get to Jump it. Jump into this. Yeah, this is a very important yeah, topic. To about. It is. And it's the last week of pride when this comes out so some of you need this because you've been doing this all wrong all pride and pride's almost over so you gotta get this right which is why you guys we're here to give you the tips the best ways the 10 best ways to get you ready to the gay bar uh, uh. it's time to go to the gay bar yeah we're going to give you some tips, ladies and gentlemen. Top 10 tips to prepare you. Even if you're gay, if you're straight, everybody should go to the gay bar and have a damn good time with moves like that. The double the double hand job as Seema. <laughs> That's right. Milk the cow, Simo. Milk the cow. <laughs> That's the, those are his modeling poses too. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got the gig. You know? <laughs> Let me tell you, not just anyone with this face can be a model. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> suck some dicks. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, uh, speaking of big rape. mouth. <laughs> speaking of weird rapey things, yeah, uh, I did just find out a fun fact that makes my life so much better. Uh, before we get to the topic. Uh, you know, have you, have you ever seen the Lord of the Rings movies? Yeah. At all? So there's like a main ogre dude in the first movie. And I think he gets killed in the first or second movie. But he's like an ugly ass ogre. And he like leads the troop of like bad ogre things against, you know, the, the good guys. That ogre, that hideous creature, that face. Peter Jackson actually had it based on Harvey Weinstein. <gasps> Really? Swear to God. At the time, uh, originally Harvey Weinstein's company was producing the Lord of the Rings movies, and he was like heckling Peter Jackson that if he didn't make the three movies, condense them down into one single movie, he was going to replace them with like Quentin Tarantino or someone. So Peter Jackson just hated that guy. And so he literally had him, uh, had that ogre based on his face. And eventually, another studio bought the film and saved it, and it was cool. But yeah, uh, you know, that ogre, Harvey Weinstein, and he looks just like him. It's so weird. <laughs> so Harvey Weinstein kind of blacklisted Mira Servino. So she's oh. she's like an Academy Award winning mega actress. She was in um, uh, that's her name, right? Mira Servino. She she's the the one was in Romy Michelle's High School Reunion, beautiful oh, blonde. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She was gonna be in, I think, Lord of the Rings, and then he blacklisted her because she wouldn't put out. Mm, creep. Dude, well, there you go. Let me tell you, you creeps. I there's a lot that I that I'll do in the bedroom. It's not a lot that I won't do, but there's one thing I can't do, and that's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. Equipment doesn't work. You know. Yeah. And with- I mean, Harvey and his little shriveled pecker. Ugh. Oh, he, yeah, he had, a weird yeah mean. he had a weird mean. He was like, suck on my little schmecker. <laughs> Will you please just it's flick like, it? Just like, flick it. Just do something with uh, it. Uh, I mean, that's why I, like, I feel even worse for his victims. Because, and this is terrible. This is terrible. Please don't cancel me, world. But I'm watching a documentary on Max right now on the um, Ken and Barbie killers which were a Canadian couple of, it was a super handsome guy, and a super hot girl. And uh, the guy at first was uh, a rapist that they hadn't caught. Uh, and then he, he moved over with this girl and then his crimes evolved and they ended up killing girls together. She turns him into the cops. Uh, it's like a crazy trial. He gets life. She gets like, 
think she only got like 15 years, 10 years because she cooperated. But to turn it out, she had made a, essentially made a plea deal uh, with the cops to help them. And then it turned out these these tapes of the murders that they did together came out. And it showed that she was super complicit. At the time, they thought that he had forced her into it. But you see the tapes and it's like, wow, this bitch was enjoying this. But uh, the guy was like apparently super handsome. And one of his rape victims described it as like, even though like she, he raped her, she was like, yeah, he was a very handsome guy. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to Google that. I guess I that's see. better than that. Imagine just that gross ass Harvey Weinstein with his disgusting face and his little fucking mushroom penis. And he's like all flabby. And like, ah, ah, ah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, they are, they are attractive. Yeah, yeah. Especially this is like the early nineties. So part in the hairstyles, you know, <laughs> You know, and he has he has really pretty blue eyes. Fuck. Yeah. You know what? I don't I'll understand. You. If you're attractive, why do you have to be a predator? If you could just sit rapist, in the back of the right? bar and they will come to you, I'm sure. And yes, and he was like super privileged too. Like, like dude, just, just be white. white you're guys. fine. <laughs> That's always a you're fine. <laughs> you know, it's Canada, so I don't know how you know it's kind of. <laughs> But I'm guessing things aren't so different than they are here. <laughs> but anyways, let's pivot back <laughs> to the tips for the gay bar. Because you don't want to be a creep. You don't want to be a loser. You don't want to suck. You want to be the great. Oh, maybe you do want to suck. But that's, you know, that's th- these tips will get you there. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be great, damn it. Because it's pride. And you want to grow out with a bang. Woo, yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, with a bang, and you end up at the clinic the next morning. The the line at the line at the clinic the day after Pride Parade is gonna be a long line. Oh yeah. (laughs) So wrap it before you tap it. Uh, Anyways, Mr. Mo, you can uh, start us off. Okay. So you are the gay one on the podcast, so I feel like I should not go first. (laughs) Perfect. You're the authority. This first one. Is simple. Don't poop at the gay bar. Don't come in my bar and poop. Okay, guys? No poop in the gay bar. And it's two reasons. One, it's just gross. Because, you know, to be honest, if you really uh, care about others, you would have done an enema before the bar. Because if you're going to go home <laughs> that night with somebody, you don't want any, like, doo-doo on their, on their prick. You know, you... You, you don't want anybody to pull out their dick and it looked like a fucking chili dog, you know? So, yeah. um, so you should probably clean the pipes before you go to the bar. But another reason is that um, uh, the bathrooms of the gay bar, sometimes they take the doors off of the stalls um, in an effort to prevent hooking up and uh, cocaine usage. And so uh, you don't want to poop at a gay bar if you can't poop in privacy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, unless home, you're into that. Go right. before you, you know. leave. Just try. Just try. Just try a little bit. Just try to go potty before you leave. You know? All right, I can't, sometimes I can't poop unless, you know, someone's watching. So I just drag Julie yeah, into the I bathroom with me. Relatable. <laughs> I, need someone, I, I need someone to give me a hand massage. <laughs> right you know i gotta relax <laughs> i'm like i'm like julie please <laughs> Carlos is like, hey julie can you please hum the jeopardy theme song <laughs> thanks <laughs> you see julie humming it with an oxygen tank <laughs> <laughs> the things we do for love you know <laughs> So I agree. Uh, don't poop at the gay bar. And, uh, you know, there might be, even though they try their best to, uh, you know, uh, prevent hookups there, uh, some people might still hook up there. So don't fucking cramp their game with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I spoke about this right here on this very show, like uh, season one, I think it was, when I was going to, you know, hook up with this girl at the frat house. And she wanted to go in the bathroom to do it, but I had to take all of a sudden this massive poop. And then I pooped on the bathroom, but the toilet didn't work. So then that thing stank and it cock blocked the shit out of me, literally. 
<laughs> but I feel like if I would have gone in the bathroom and we would have started doing stuff, I would have just pooped everywhere in the middle of it. And I would have probably ruined my reputation, I would say. So <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's like when a stinky shit cock blocks you guys. So you don't want to be doing that to other people. So relax. You know, do it at home. <laughs> yes, please. Anyway, uh, I'm with you. What's, what's first on your list? So I'm going to go with uh, one that actually will, I guess, precede this one. Uh, there's no food there at the gay bar usually. You know what I mean? These gays are trying to put that booty into good use. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you're a food monster like me, eat before. But if you're planning on putting that booty to use, I recommend you don't. You know, Simo literally just provided the details of what happens uh, if you do. And uh, he has the bedroom sheets to prove it, you guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I got that laundromat bill that is really, really <laughs> upsetting. That's, that's why he only buys his sheets in brown now, you guys. <laughs> I do Six have sheets. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, there's not going to be any food. Uh, you said control. I mean, that also means control your bruise intake. Cause you don't know, you know what I mean? If you're trying to keep that booty safe, you're not eating for a while. Uh, you don't want to be that drunk mess. Keep your, keep your wits around you. And that's just bar one oh one Cause you never know. And you know, there's like, um, there's this bar in New York called rebar mm-hmm. and they serve hot dogs <laughs> and like little dollar pizzas. It's like, um, remember those little, like little tiny mama Celeste pizzas. Yeah, but it's not good. It's not good food. So no. I, I don't know. Some bars were selling food during the pandemic because you weren't allowed to serve drinks without a food item or something. There's some right. weird clause. Um, but if if they do serve food at the gay bar, trust me, you don't want to eat it. Just no. assume that you don't, you don't know who the fuck not. is cooking that or yeah. when it was cooked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this there's so many the diseases time. you're at, you're exposed to at a gay bar. I mean, you don't want the clap. And you also don't want food board illness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to dodge chlamydia and, you know, crabs left and right. Do you also want to get, um, you know, a staph infection from eating a 10 day old hot dog? You know what I mean? Yeah. So avoid the wieners. <laughs> Be avoid judgmental. The wieners. Jeez. Okay. And also, you know what else you should avoid? Um, ordering complicated drinks because most gay bars are super crowded and super busy and the bartender just wants something quick to move on to the next patron. So if you're like, if they say, what do you want? And you say, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe something like fruity or what do you think? Uh, what do people normally get here? No, you're, yeah. you're, you're wasting their time and everyone behind you is pissed too. So if you're going to order something like a Long Island iced tea, I get annoyed. I'm like, you you can't pick one liquor. You just want all of them in the same damn glass, you selfish prick. So so you want to get a beer, a shot, or vodka tonic, vodka crayon. You know what I mean? Just something easy. Totally. But if you get complicated drinks, then you're a dick. And here's the thing. And I actually blame like TV and movies and things like that on this. But there's the big... Uh, trope i guess is the right word i'm looking for that you know when you go to a gay bar you get like the orange fruity mojito blah 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 drink you know and it comes in a giant thing with a little straw and like the fucking umbrella and little penises all around (laughs) it's like that is not what the gay bars are in fact those bartenders probably have to go dance in five seconds if they're in the flaming saddles yeah (laughs) They they got shit to do they're mostly there for eye candy, to be honest. So it's not like you're there to you get yourself the finest cocktail in town. No, you're there to get yourself some cock and tail in town. So that's what you're there to do. The guy just needs to pour you the simplest drink that he can so you can move on to the next fucking person. Of course. So, now, if you yeah, go to a cocktail simple. bar that specializes in fancy cocktails, that's different. But if you're going to like, more of like a club scenario or like, you know, a busy, just a busy bar, bar a generic uh, gay bar please keep the drinks simple because there's a lot of us in line waiting for drinks and we don't want to wait for you 
to uh, be indecisive and, quite frankly, inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate. and the the benefit of this system too, you guys, which I have seen personally many times, is that the fucking bar moves quick. Like it's easy to get a drink when you're at the gay bar. You just go on the beer. It like keeps moving. It's almost like when you go to Philly to the cheesesteak places and there's like you see these massive lines you're like fuck this is gonna take forever but the guy like <laughs> he almost like mistreats you into ordering quick or they kick you out of line you know <laughs> so but in the gay bars they're just they're just nice about it but like it just moves so fast that you get your shit quick as opposed to like when you go out to like the club the normie club i guess i don't know <laughs> the straight clubs god there's it takes fucking forever sometimes because everybody's getting the weirdest shit sometimes so uh, yeah, it's a good system. It keeps things moving, and you get drunk pretty fast at the game. I so yep, I approve. It's a good way. Summer is coming. Are you ready to unveil your beach pod? Manscaped is here to ensure your body is ready for the wild with their game changing full body grooming and hygiene products. Don't be the guy at the beach with Austin Powers chest hair, baby. And if you grew some winter man tits, the least you can do is make sure they're hairless. The ladies love those hairless titties, believe you me. It's time to get ready for a hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code Frat Chat. Um, well, this one, I guess, uh, is kind of a basic one, but bring protection, brother. Yeah. This is useful for most nights out. But I notice just how many people do start to get some action at the gay bar, especially the bathrooms, which as Simo says, that's where some places even take the stall drawers Who down. told you? Where did you get this information from? <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> and then there's the thing, as we were talking about before with the wieners, you don't know where they went. You have no idea where those wieners have been. So maybe wrap it before you tap it. Or that clinic line, as you said, to be very long. <laughs> yeah, and in addition to um, protection when it comes to safe sex, you should also uh, bring with you, or if you see one, take it, the test strips for cocaine, the fentanyl mm -hmm. test strips. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think of that too. So so like there's been times I used to carry around condoms for my friends. If, if I saw like a bowl, I would grab some. And then my friends from the evening, I'm like, here, take please take this, take this, take this. But when I see those test strips, I take those too. And I, I've never yeah. done coke. And I'm also... I've never really been much of a floozy at the bar, but I think it's nice to hoard those things for your trashy friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. oh, I agree. And well, I mean, shit, man, because because it's getting scary out there. I know we've talked about fentanyl quite quite a lot on the show, but it is getting fucking scary out there. And you keep hearing these damn deaths. It's like fuck. It still doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would anybody cut cocaine? With something that will kill the clientele. I know. It's probably, but yeah, I think the fentanyl is just terrorism. You don't even yeah, and coke and coke buyers are like the like the biggest return customers. I feel like <laughs> they go back for everything. Yeah, they use it to make everything better. <laughs> They'll use it for weddings. They use it for work. They use it for for you know school. <laughs> they use it for sex. They use it for everything. Oh yeah. So, I don't understand uh, why the fuck dealers would ever do that, but that's just me. That's why I stick to good old legal weed. <laughs> Correct. Brought to you by well, New Jersey. Crush up an Adderall, snort an Adderall. <laughs> no, I did not tell you guys to do that. <laughs> it's all SEMO. <laughs> <laughs> do that in lieu of risking your life with cocaine is what I'm saying. Um, if, if you're going to do it. That's fair enough. But yeah, okay. bring protection on. And if you see some test strips, bring them forward, the boys and the girls, because we need them. Yes. Okay, so my next one is please don't broadcast your straightness. It's just obnoxious. No one asks. So yeah. if you're telling every gay person, oh, whoa, 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 I'm straight, I'm straight. It's pretty presumptuous for you to assume that they're interested in you. They're just talking to yeah. you. You know what I mean? So totally. That's just so. And, and also, it, when, when people are like, "Oh, I'm straight. I'm straight," it almost implies that like straights up here and gays on here. It's like, mm. 
Oh, no, no. Mm. oh, ooh, gross. I'm not. I never thought about it like that, but yeah, so that makes sense. It's and, just obnoxious. And you're at the gay bar, so you're in their domain now. Mm -hmm. But also, like, I mean, I've been to many a gay bar now, especially. I had never been one really till I moved to New York City, but in the last, I mean, shit, I've been here now since 2012. Been to many a gay bar. I think I've been hit on twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice the gays they're not fucking paying attention to you man that's like some people are just kind of like flirty in nature but like just because someone has a conversation with you doesn't mean they're trying to fuck you you know what i mean so i actually will say going to a gay bar is a good experience for a lot of straight men to learn that about women you fucking that does you know just because someone looks at you says hello to you <laughs> Doesn't mean they're trying to get in your pants. And you yeah. learn that very easy at the gay bar. So I do think it's a good thing for every dude to check it out here and there. Just saying. Oh, you might yeah. learn a thing. Tables are turned in the gay bar. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So yeah, you should definitely uh, uh, check out a gay bar if you haven't, straight dudes. Uh, it'll change your life, brother. It'll change your life. So that's a good one. Um, but ba ba ba. What's next on your list? I'm going to say one that should be, uh, you know, simple for people to get, but it, I still see some strangers that don't catch on to this. You got to be social at the gay bar. You know what I mean? There's like, there's like a lot of bars. People just go to sulk in the corner and drink their problems away. Gay bars are not this. They're like social and nice. And the music is like fun and everybody's oh, yeah. just the, like there to have a good it. time. Yeah. And you can see that everybody's just blowing off steam or blowing Steve, whatever. <laughs> but everybody's just happy. <laughs> so like you such can't a hot guy. guy. <laughs> so you just can't be that guy or girl in the corner just sulking away. Uh, dude, you got to get in there. Have a good time. Be social. Even if you like, like, barely even talk to him you just go in there and dance whatever fucking enjoy yourself i it's like i like i'm i'm telling you people it's <laughs> it's one of the best experiences you, you always have a good time no one's gonna judge you no matter what like it's not a place where people go to like be cool it's like you just go to be yourself and have a good time and it's awesome so enjoy that take the opportunity to fucking be free brother you know sister. um last yeah. night at this gay bar called social atlas club uh this guy was sitting on the couch and osmar went over to him and just got him up and down dancing and he was like have fun have oh, fun come okay. on have fun and i thought it was so cute and the guy came over and chatted with us he's really cool he just moved here doesn't know many people and so oh. we exchanged social media i'll invite him out sure but but um it's it's a a, a queer environment should be warm and welcoming and accepting and we don't want anyone you know um uh, not enjoying it to the full capacity of you know a gay bar so you should you should have fun if you're not in the mood to have fun then don't come totally like i'm i've never for example been in a game in a situation in a gay bar where i feel like you know like bro -y dudes are trying to beat me up or anything like that like i don't feel any conflict it's always like fun happy and accepting and cool it's not like your traditional clubs where you bump into someone and they're like, Hey, you want to fight motherfucker? You know, it's like, it's like the coolest place to be. So, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have a good time. When you're there. If not, what are you doing? What are you Correct. doing? And, um, you also want to make sure that the people who are serving you and dealing with all sorts of nonsense, because drunk gays can be a little, a little much, uh, you want to make sure you're tipping them appropriately. But um, this is my rule of thumb, at least a dollar per drink. So yeah. I know that, you know, if, if you're getting, if you're <coughs> uh, using a credit card and you have a tab, I think it's appropriate to tip 20%. But if you're using cash yeah. and you're just getting, uh, you're just paying as you go, let's say the beers are $10 a piece. You get four beers. I don't think pouring four beers uh, deserves eight dollars i don't think i don't think um 20 is necessary in some instances when the drinks are overpriced uh but i do think totally. at the very least at least a dollar per drink not totally i'm with you i think it's fair and uh you mean 
Bartenders literally remember you. Oh my you're gosh, a bar if you're a bad tipper, they'll see you. They'll they'll see you there waving your hand later on in the night when you need that refill. But guess what? They'll be looking at that guy. <laughs> yep. So and that guy you is probably your me because I'm a great tipper. <laughs> no, seriously, I just <laughs> I feel like huge. not enough people. <laughs> But not enough people understand that you got to be nice to your service staff. Like, people are such caring sometimes with waiters, bartenders, and stuff like that. It's like, you know they can fucking spit in your drink or food, delay your service. Like, they can really, like, shit on your dining or or drinking experience. I if spit in a couple of soups off. before when I was serving. Oh no! My friend was dating a douche, and so I spit in his soup before I pour it. I spit in the bowl before I poured the soup in there. And then there was um a family that they were really mean, and uh, they're like snapping their fingers, and I was like, they're getting spit in there. I actually think I spit in their oh. drinks. I would hack a loogie before I, I pour the drink. Oh. In. <laughs> so I'm talking like full on mucus. Oh no. no, no! Wow, I don't want to say wow. what restaurant it is because I don't want a lawsuit. But you know what it was. <laughs> the soup is particularly delicious today. I don't know what it is about it. You know why? It's, it's got this gooey greatness to it. Sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> it probably it probably tastes like it probably tastes like your dad's semen. <laughs> it's like what? I tend to notice uh -huh. a nutty taste uh -huh. to it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people got to be good to your weight staff. <laughs> yes, protein. <laughs> Do I need to apologize a, for giving you a little extra protein? I I care about your <laughs> your health and well being. <laughs> Oh God! Honestly, I don't know what I would do if I found a loogie in my food. Oh, that would be awful. I remember when I was a kid in Venezuela, we have this food that's called a tequeño. tequeño. It's like a little like tequeño, T E Q U E N Y, which is the end with a little mm -hmm. scribble. Oh, and it's like a it's like a cheese stick thing, but it's it's wrapped in dough, but it's essentially like a cheese stick. And then we have a decanon, which is like a bigger version of that. It honestly looks like a fucking cheese wiener, essentially. But my buddy in like fourth or fifth grade in Venezuela got one of those. We, we could get them at school. And uh, someone asked him for a bite of it because these things are massive. And he took like he ripped off the top piece of it and then went to give it to my friend. And then he literally looked down on it. And there was a booger. <laughs> At the Kenya, <laughs> he went to the lady. He's like, "Hey, I, I think, I think there's a booger in my food." She's like, "No, no, no, that's just cheese." He's like, "No, no, 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 that's a booger." And there was like a hair sticking out of it. <laughs> like, why? Why? Do you have like, how does that even happen? Did someone just rub a booger in there? They sneeze. Like, how the fuck does that happen? That's really but, disgusting. I, I would die. I, I would, would die. want blood. <laughs> If I saw a booger in my tequeño. <laughs> Did I say it right? Yeah, it was perfect, actually. Hey, right yo. Guys, look how cultured I am. Um, I the crowd last night was, I think, I could tell there was a little bit of disappointment that I didn't know geography like everyone else. But, you know, I'm uh, a product of public school. They all came from... Good families and went to good schools. Yeah, <laughs> the prerequisite to come to the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's next on your list? So up next on my list is uh, one that should be obvious, but again, some people don't know these things. Dress nice, but not too nice. You know what I mean? Don't be a loser and like wear a tuxedo, but you don't want to look like a bum at the gay bar. Because here's the thing. Uh, the gays try pretty hard. They look good. So it's like, it's essentially think of your normal going out outfit, but just plus it up a little bit. You know, make sure your nails are short. Make sure, you know, your, your beard is trimmed up. You know, your shirt is clean. You want basic 
basic hygiene rules. Just follow them to a T. Because trust me, uh, they take care of themselves, man. They look great. <laughs> and it's weird because even though you're straight, whatever, yeah, or if you're gay, you're trying to get laid. But even if you don't want to get laid, you still don't want to be the ugliest person in the bar. There's something about that that's just like very demoralizing. <laughs> so you'd still like to just feel like if you were gay, they'd like you. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be that bum. So dress up. You'll have a good time. Take you know, make sure you dress yourself. with a capital P R I D E in your appearance. Uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, but there's gonna be a lot of competition there. You don't want to. You don't want to be the 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 fugly bitch in pajama pants. Totally. And if you even even if you're straight, let's say you bring a girl, and they look around and they see all these very beautiful dudes, and then you you're gonna look you're gonna go from a seven to a three very quick. Yeah. Just by association. You know what I mean? Yeah, people even dress nice for the gym, like their clothes match. Oh, yeah. Um, like I, I won't go to the gym without mascara. That's for da- that's for damn sure. I won't be caught dead in the gym without my mascara on. And um, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just got to take some time totally. appearance. That's all. Totally. Um, well, I'm well, with you. This is my last one, and this okay. one, I think, is pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised. A lot of my friends fall for it. But this one is, if you are gay and you're listening, please don't flirt with the bartender because he's probably straight. Mm. So they're not interested, and don't they're, they're gonna they're gonna gay bait you. They're gonna they're gonna talk you up and flirt to try to get more tips and more drinks out of you. But they're not gonna go home with you. Most mm. of the sexy bartenders at gay bars are not gay. Except for Flaming Saddles because they're all twinkle toes. But um, <laughs> Flaming Saddles is the bar where they, it's like Coyote Ugly But Gay uh, yeah, and like country yeah. themes. So, yes, most of the hot bartenders are straight. They don't want any of the equipment, any of the equipment that you're working with. And that's bartending 101, too. You're kind of, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're flirting up your base. Uh, it's usually someone very attractive who's also super cool who gets the bartending gig so that you know they're, they're that's what they do that's and then it makes you want to buy more drinks uh then as you get drunker you're like oh maybe they do like me and then you make a fucking fool out of yourself especially if you want to go back to the bar you don't need that guy <laughs> or girl mm-hmm. who's well in love with the bartender then trust me it's, it's just not gonna work you guys so uh yeah that's that's very very good advice mr mo if you bring a sexy uh, have you ever girl seen with you to the gay bar, she's gonna go home with the bartender. Yeah, that's not very true. <laughs> so keep him away. Yeah. Have you you go buy the drink. But I interrupted you. you. You were about to say, "Have you seen something?" I forgot. Oh, sorry. That's really rude. <laughs> my New Year's resolution was to stop interrupting people and to wait for my turn to speak. Oh, it's okay. Uh, obviously, it wasn't that important anyway, so I just completely, yeah, <laughs> just completely left my brain. <laughs> Actually, I had the cure to cancer came to my brain, and then... <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. It's gone. Uh, anyway. You know where it went? I think it, I think it went down with the Titanic and blew up underwater. <laughs> oh, too soon. Too soon. You know uh, what? My heart sunk when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm <ching. laughs> um, I don't know why people want to do that anyway. Um, and it was on the news because they were rich white people. Um, mm-hmm. But there was, <laughs> there were, I think, a hundred migrant individuals on. A, um, I think I think that they were heading to Italy and their boat capsized and uh, I think like a small percentage were rescued most of them drowned no a lot of them drowned and most were not recovered yet but that that, that didn't yeah. make the news because they're they're migrants that you know that they're 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 um, not rich white people so there's a handful of rich white people that died it's the top headline there's 
a hundred people that aren't rich and white and no one knows about it. Do you know what I mean? To be fair, two of the people in the Titanic thing were Indian. Was oh, they were? Son. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. They were still obviously rich. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Afford this trip. Um, I don't know. Though. I, I will say really the it's tough to compete with news that involves a sinking at the Titanic. And, you know, the, the story kind of wrote itself. I see how I, I don't agree with it. I think obviously you should have seen more about the migrant situation. But when you think about it, like, for example, like the there was someone in the in the boat that was related to someone who was in the original Titanic, who was a rich couple that the they actually in the movie, you see them. Uh, that old couple that kisses themselves in bed and the water like races in the bed. Apparently that's based on this person's like great, great grandmother, or great grandmother, whatever, who they were rich, but the guy, the husband refused to get on the lifeboat because he would see that there's still women and children, uh, even in the poor sections that hadn't gotten on. So he said, I'm not getting on until all the women and children are safely on. And then the wife wouldn't leave without her husband. So they went down with the ship. Oh. Um, so you see all these interesting things and it's really the Titanic. That's the big draw here. People fucking love that shit. So blame Leo, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> that beautiful bastard. <laughs> his damn hair. Uh, Trust me. Draw me like one of you. He has so much and just never worked out. My hair's too frizzy. No, that, that like 90s uh, hairstyle, that little like bowl thing, like little penis cut. My dream was always to be able to pull that oh, off. Yes, had too. Damn thick ass hair. <laughs> which at least I still have hair, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. But I never got my Leo cut. <laughs> I can it just makes me look Puerto Rican. <laughs> I can only achieve a Leo cut if I use a flat iron. Yeah, well, that's fair. I can't even imagine what my hair would look if I used a flat iron. <laughs> That would be, I don't even know if I want to, but that could be an oh, interesting look. It's a lot of effort to look nice. Super emo. Some people just wake up and look like that. Ugh. I Bastards. know. He and probably he does. does. He probably has like hairstyle models. <laughs> He's sleeping and they're doing his hair. Maybe. Though, to be fair, the older Leo gets, the least he's taking care of himself. He's kind of he's going the Jack Nicholson route. So yeah, I don't really know that he's you know. And like, how does he land such beautiful women in in Hollywood and like the? Oh, because he's Leo, dude. At this point, he's got that Titanic. I'm, Again, I'm telling you, I don't dude, do ever since Titanic. I do a lot, <laughs> but I won't do that. <laughs> Anywho, what is your final tip for the gay bars? This is an important. My one, guys. final tip. This is important. I think this is the most important advice I've ever given anyone. If you don't know what you're doing, stay away from the jukebox. I'm talking to you, Jimmy, who wants to play metal. This is not the place. I'm talking about you, no. Harry, who wants to play your, your stupid song. I don't give a fuck. This is not the place. It's not the place. You got to play good shit. You gotta, you gotta lay in half. Like for example, I never pick songs at the gay bar because I know they're not gonna be liked. <laughs> it's not my place. You can always so stay away. You can always go with Britney. Totally, it's Britney, bitch. Or um, that's even always Shania. A safe one. Uh, I've noticed Shania Twain does well. I feel like a woman. Bam, bang, man, wah, wah, wah. That song always, always kills. That was actually playing when we went into um. Uh, when we walked into Flaming Saddles last night. See? See? That's the one. <laughs> and then they weren't dancing? You told me they weren't dancing at all? They weren't. I think it's just because the bar was too busy. There's too many uh, drinks needed. We, I was in line for a little bit to get a drink, and I was like, ugh. Because that's usually one that they do their little they do the little moves to. You know? <laughs> you know what they said to me, though? When I, I said, hi, can I have... I said, can I have five tequila shots and one... Um, vodka shot, and the guy was like, "It's gonna be X amount of money." I said, "Okay." Do I look Holy poor? Money. Uh, but I thought to myself, "Wow, did I look like a bub last night?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I looked nice. I was wearing a pride shirt, 
Like, Maybe because uh, you brought your bond to the bar. They were like, oh, this guy's a loser. <laughs> he lives at home. <laughs> he had fun. You know what? Last night, Osmario was trying to play Brazilian songs on the jukebox and didn't have any. I'm like, you know, a lot of jukeboxes don't have all that stuff. Yeah, what the um, fuck was he going to play? Mambo Lido! Mambo Lido! He was so upset. Like, like, okay, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Anything you want, baby. I mean, I guess I see, you know, that is sort of where, what's his face? Uh, the New York lying uh, congressman who is now in jail. Fuck, what is it? The guy Santos. that lies about him. Yes, George Santos. That is, that is where he went to uh, get his boogie on. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure in Brazil there is quite a lot of uh, drag music and stuff, but. Is he in jail? Yeah, he got, uh, well, he got out on bail. That was paid by his papa, apparently. But yeah, there he's he's they're coming after him for uh his bullshit. I think he lied on like election documents about his income and then tax stuff and oh my uh, God. all kinds of other shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Yikes. But yeah, he would go to Brazil to get his his little drag dancing in. So I guess I, I guess maybe Osmario should make you a gay Brazilian playlist just to see what they got. <laughs> you know, I do like some Brit. There's there's this one artist I'm kind of obs- obsessed with. Her name is Ludmila. Okay. I've she is a queer her. artist. Um, I think she had a nose job because I saw some old pictures and I was like, something something's not the same. But um, <laughs> she has some phenomenal songs and I like Anita too. Anita. Uh, she has a song called Boys Don't Cry. Okay. Okay. I've heard that. Now, what happened to Anita one? Did, 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 you know, she die or something? Oh, no. I mean, I like Anita as well. <laughs> so, guys, listen to Ludmila and Anita, and Anita. you won't be disappointed. I promise. But don't Anywho. look for that the jukebox at the gay bar here in America, because it's not going to be there. Yeah, Sorry, it's not going to have it. What can you do? Just stick to Britney, bitch. <laughs> Brit is Britney, bitch. And, and that's our list. This is kind of a short episode today. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a quickie, as the same pride. Oh, but a good one, a very important one, and one that you must have if you want to enjoy your last week of pride. <laughs> because. Those were the guest damn tips to get you ready for the last week of Pride. So let us know what you thought of our list. Uh, give us a follow on all social channels at Frat Chat Podcast. That's on Instagram. That's on Facebook. That's on Twitter. That's on YouTube. You can also give me a follow as well at Carlos Does the World on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube, and at Carlos Does World. On Twitter, you can find Mr. Mo as well at chris.more.comedy on the old Instagram machine and TikTok, and see more comedy on the old Twitter machine. Oh, yeah, that's a double O in the more because that's a double O, like I gave it to his mama. (laughs) So, Mr. Mo, it's time to go. So what'd you get is out of here. I motion to adjourn this meeting so I can take my mom to a gay bar and follow all these rules. Yay! And I second. Or I should say, yes! <laughs> all right, you guys, enjoy your last week of Pride. And we'll be back next week with another edition of the greatest podcast in the history of podcasting time. Chat Podcast. Hey-o. See ya. Ciao.